Welcome to a little bit of Lab Rat Fun Networking with Fish. We're going to go on a network detective ride along today. We're going to go ahead and ride along. You're going to ride along with me on the case of the BGP flapping routes. Now, our sources say that Router 20 is acting suspicious. What does suspicious mean? Suspicious means out of the norm, correct? There is normal behavior which, as network detectives, for our network we need to know what normal is. What normal is differentiates for us between a fact and a clue. And that's very important in our network environment. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to dive into our crime scene, which is our network, but we're going to start on R20 because someone says that it is doing things that are not normal. Now, who is telling us this? It could be an NMS tool that you have. It could be some analytics that you're running. It could just be a show command or some script that you're running. But some surveillance, be it CLI or automated, has said something is happening on R20 that you're tracking that tends not to trend to be normal. So let's go ahead and go into it. So we're going to start at R20 again. This is where we're going to start, and we're going to find the suspects. Well, wait, I said that R20 is the one that's not acting normal. Just because R20 is the one that's not acting normal doesn't mean it's not somebody else's fault. This happens a lot in our environments, in our networking environment, cascading failures, not isolating fault domains. So we're going to go to R20 and we're going to find the suspects, the ones that are actually causing this. So we're going to gather the facts, collect the clues, follow the evidence, and interview the witnesses. Who's a witness? R20 is a witness. What is it witnessing? It is experiencing something that is not normal to it. This will help us figure out who is the suspicious device or whatever and get to problem solved. So let's go ahead and go to R20. Someone said something suspicious is going on, so let's check. Okay, well, we're Autonomous System 20. Our BGP table version is this. This is our router ID. This is the amount of memory that's being taken up. So what I'm going to do is what I sometimes do, which is just look right down here. So what's weird about this? Well, R20 is in our network. You and I work at the same company, and R20 is one of our routers, and these other two routers are eBGP peers that are also in our network. Well, it doesn't look very exciting. One of them is advertising four prefixes to us. Another one's advertising three prefixes to, it, to us. Hmm. Okay, the BGP peers have been up for over three hours. Now, I'll tell you what bothers me. What bothers me is this number right here, 14,356. The BGP table version is simply a number that increments every time a new BGP best path is selected. This number being that high in our enterprise environment where we are actually doing eBGP tells me that that's very strange. How did seven prefixes get to a table version of 14,356 in this time frame? Well, Let's wonder, maybe we had another BGP peer. Uh, maybe we haven't been up for very long. Maybe we're not seeing everything. Maybe there's a BGP neighbor that's flapping. So let's go ahead and just dive into this a little bit more. OK? Well, what did we just see happen? We saw that in two minutes, our BGP table version just went up again. OK? That's interesting. So let's go up one more time. OK, it just went up again. But we saw something else this time, right? Yeah. Look over here. 
306. So 306 plus 68. Yeah, that's getting around about the same number, huh? Give or take some. Now check this out. It just jumped again. So what I'm going to tell you is, is that we're having churn in our network. And when I look here as to who is giving me the churn, what I see is that I would like to go to this router here. So we go up, we pull up our network diagram, and we see that our router 20 is actually BGP peered, E BGP peered with router 40, and then also with router 2. Router 2 is the one that seems to be advertising prefixes to us and then pulling them away, and then advertising them and then pulling them away. So our 20 is just an innocent bystander at this point in time. It is getting churned from it, which it is then passing on to R40. You could have just as easily started at R40, but I decided to have you start here. So we have churn in our network. Remember, every time the BGP table version goes up, we have a new best path. There's a lot of churn going on, plus flapping BGP prefixes. So let's go to R2 to see if we can find out what's going on here. So if I do a show IP BGP summary, what we see is that R2 is actually also BGP peered. So it's not only BGP peered with R20, but it's also IBGP peered with R3, which is 10.100, 100.3. Now, if you look, our BGP table version is 61,000. Now, this is a different table version than R20 had because this is locally significant within each router because each router picks its own BGP best path decision-making algorithm. Remember, the BGP table version gets incremented every time there's a new BGP best path. So if we look, we have 306. And then if we up arrow, we can actually see that we just jumped up again. So we were 61,000, now we're 63,000. And we can see that we're actually receiving messages. So we can actually trace backwards and see right here that it is router three that is actually causing this churn. Here are the prefixes, I'm taking them away. Here are the prefixes, I'm taking them away. So let's actually go over to router three because R2 again is EBGP peered with R20 and it is IBGP peered with R3. So many times when you see churn or whatever, because our networks are so intertwined together, you have to really go backwards. You can't assume that that's the suspect or that is the crime scene. So in our situation so far, R20 and R2 have just been witnesses. So now let's go to R3. Is it a witness or is it the culprit? Now, if we go over to R3, there is a command I love. So if we do a show IP BGP summary, here's what's interesting. R3 only has the BGP peer with R2. That's it. No one else is sending it BGP prefixes to cause the churn. We have found our root. So here's the question. If R3 isn't BGP peered with anybody else, where are the prefixes coming from and why do we have churn? I think one of the things I love about networks is, is that the devices do what we program them to do. So let's see what we're talking about. As you can see, my table version up here is 65,451. My table version here is 66,000. 
Nothing happened here. Okay, well, I did send a lot of messages over to R2. But what are the root of these messages? What am I sending? And who's telling me to send them? We programmed it to. We programmed it to by doing this. We did what I don't like doing. Somebody did a wide open redistribute OSPF, which is basically programming this router that whenever there is any OSPF churn whatsoever in our IGP network, please tell everybody else about it. So how do we find out that that's happening? Well, obviously I know that that's happening because I did it. I did that redistribute. I have router three connected up to another device that is flapping the prefixes. How do we find that? Beautiful command that I love very much. Show IP BGP IPv4 unicast. And if you actually come down here at the bottom, it talks to you about the version. If you type version, you can either, either put a number in but since our numbers are just churning so much, that's going to be hard. So what were the most recent 10? What were the 10 most recent BGP best path changes? So we see 1.1.36. So let's go ahead and look at that. So if we do a show IP BGP, 1.1.36.0. We can see that it's now table version 71,000. Okay, if we go ahead and we do it again. Doing a slash 24 as well. We see that our table version now has bumped up again. These best paths are getting churned. Why? Because I have a device that on this diagram is called router one, but in reality, it's a Spirant test center with an OSPF peer between router one and router three. And just like a lot of IGPs, it's flapping routes. And everything is just this wide open area zero. And all we're doing is we're, we're not isolating our fault domains. So we're going to end up having a fault over here and then cascading through our network until we actually have to follow the breadcrumbs back. So now we have figured out who done it. In my situation, it's real simple to make it stop. I go to my Spiron traffic generator and I say, stop. And as soon as I say stop, I can go over here to R3. And that BGP table version won't change anymore. 7395. 73935. Everyone else now should be very, very calm in our network. Now, of course, the next thing that we do is we should do a post-mortem on this in your network. Every failure in your network should improve your network. You have now found the culprit. Now fix it and prevent it from happening again. How could you have prevented this? Hmm, hard to tell. Do route maps. Please do not do wide open redistributes of an IGP into your BGP. Configure with intent. Know what your intent is for your design, your configuration, and then make it so. Thank you so very much for having fun and going on this ride along. Have a great day. You be safe out there.